Hey, this is Tammy from Faster Pussycat, and you're listening to Appetite for Distortion with Brando. You know where they are. is Appetite for Distortion. Welcome to the podcast, Appetite for Distortion, episode number 380. My name is Brando. Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Tammy down how are you sir i'm good how are you doing i'm good it's i'll, I'll be honest right away to get it off because i'm thinking about it one of those episodes uh interviews i was kind of nervous for and then just in the few a minute minute and a half talking to you before we start recording you are so down to earth so i am really excited to uh, to get going i'm chill mofo <laughs> yes you, you never know because and we'll get into that because the whole sleaze thing and and, and uh people get a pigeon held this certain kind of i don't know so i'm like that that's why i like the, the name distortion like getting through all that and just talk to real people um i was gonna say my guest co-host today we'll see if he pops in but that's a, a friend of the show an old friend he's been on in a while uh, mr mark alexander erber from golden robot records i want to give him a shout out because he was nice enough to set this interview up for us i'm actually wearing yeah. my Golden Robot sweatshirt. You your GIR. Yep. Right you, nice enough I to send me one. from Australia. I got, I got my Harley one on. Oh, okay. Because I'm like, why does he need uh, a, a sweatshirt in Australia? It's it's freezing here in New York City right now, so I need it. It's cold in Hollywood right now, too. What's cold? Believe it or not. What's cold? I don't know. It's like 40, 40, 45, I think it's that right now. Yeah, that's For cold. Hollywood, it's pretty cold. I'm that's from cold Seattle, then. you know. But for here, it's everything. The walls are thin and... <laughs> Because you want, because it's normally always hot. Now it's like freezing. So. Right on. And, and perhaps we'll get into your, your from Seattle days because I like to you know, <laughs> kind of learn about people, like their their path and how they get along, uh, go along that path. But uh, as we're on the subject of Golden Robot, because the big news that came out and it's already out, it's a double sided single. It could be, it's not like a side A, side B. They're both side A, if you want to call it that. But one's an original, uh, like a ghost, and then uh, pirate love, the the Johnny Thunders tune. So first things first, I guess. How has the reception been? Because I'm reading nothing but good things. This is faster it's, pussycat. This is what we want. I, I yeah, I've heard just good things. I don't go hunt it down, but what I've heard from people, I've gotten texts from friends. It's like just going, oh man, I really love it. It's like old school. I didn't. I never try to do anything a certain way. I just try to write a song and just record it and try to make it come out as cool as I think it can be. I'm constantly going, ah, I could have done this part better, or this part better, and just nitpick it. But finally, it's like, okay, here, do it. And everybody seems to be digging it. So, you know, I have the people that don't like it haven't voiced it. So, you know what I mean? So, right. so that's cool. Well, nowadays it's so easy to do that, but that's why it's been so nice to be like, Faster Pussycat, new song, and it's just you read all these like yeah this is what we, we again I'm I'm all in with a, a podcast I'm looking at all these different major rock sites and you're one of those names that get picked up so it's a it's cool to know that Faster Pussycat is back I know there was a delay with all of us with COVID and everything but you mentioned the songwriting as somebody who has no musical talent that's why I got into radio the play <laughs> is how do you start you know how did you start writing you know. Um, you know, like it a was, ghost. Was it an idea? Was it a melody? How did it, how did it begin for you? Like a ghost is it was crazy because it's like it's the first song I that I wrote sober. You know what I mean? I mean, I didn't write the early stuff. I wasn't you know a mess. A little later, I got a little bit more of a mess. So it was like, but I was like always like come in here. I my stuff sitting there. I'd be fear. I have Danny come over, a beer, some Jack Daniels, my packs of smokes, and and a tray of whatever, what have you. And then we get to, let's get to work. Now, when I went to start like a ghost, I had like coffee. I'm like, 
Okay, what am I supposed to do here? Mm -hmm. So it's like, but I started that song on an acoustic, which I never really did before. And it, it lost all the acoustic and it just turned into this rock song. So different, it's always different. There's, you know, there's not, I don't have a certain way. I okay. used, usually with a beat, we'll come up, let's, let's throw down a beat and then just start writing some riffs or start singing a melody line and then let's go. And I did a lot of writing with, with, uh, with Danny on the, the glory hole, power on the glory hole record and stuff since the, you know, in the two thousands and whatnot, but like the old school stuff, I kind of went back to that for this. I just would be me with, uh, uh my little multi-track, you know, I got my computer here nowadays. The old days was a like, four track or a right. little eight track and just lay down a beat and just start building it from there and put lyrics to it or just have a beat and then sing a melody and then put guitar to it. You know, I'm just, it's the way I worked on stuff and I still, you know, still do, but this, this track too, it was like the, like I said, the first track I did that I wrote sober in a long time. So. Well, mazel tov on that. And another theme of this podcast, I'm sure you can tell by the name of it, the primary theme, but the, the secondary theme is mental health. Uh, it was recently seven years for me without a drink. And that was very difficult. I was definitely in a very different place. My, didn't think my career was going the way it, it was going, uh, what I wanted it to go. Uh, definitely alone. I was doing the George Thurgood thing. I drink alone. Now <laughs> I, I got to where I was doing that a lot too. Just, I had to be holed up here and just, yeah, just drink and, and other things. So. And, but now I'm, um, I got married this summer. Gonna have a kid on the way, so you know. And, there and you now go. You have, Congratulations! And you birthed a new song, so it's there all that's similar. I got a baby. It's a <laughs> musical baby. You have a real one. Yeah, right on. Uh, so I, I guess with this though, what you mentioned before the the Glory Hole record, what is the I guess the goal? Because you've been releasing singles here and there. Is there I don't know. There's a lot of variables, I'm sure, at play, whether it's just the time of, of just releasing a whole album or is even that word time can mean something, you know, the actual physical time or the, the time, the days uh, that we're living in. So would we see a full Faster Pussy Get record at some point or more, more singles on the way? I don't know. We're, there's a there's going to be a constant flow of singles just in terms of like it's it's a different world now. Right. And, exactly. And I'm a different guy. I'm like not in the studio for like 72 hours straight <laughs> busting my, you know, it's just those days are not, you know, that's, that was riddled with Jack Daniels cocaine and two cartons of smokes. You know what I mean? I quit doing everything. So it's like, uh, it's so kind of, it's kind of taking a toll, but it's like, uh, now I'm just kind of working at my own pace and getting stuff done, but we got, as as opposed to wait until there's a big batch, we're just going to keep releasing stuff. We already got one another another track ready to go. It's getting mixed right now. Okay. So that's and we're just going to keep doing that. And then we'll put them all together, and then add a couple new more new ones and put together a new package with do some different mixes and some stuff like just so people can get it. Otherwise, right. wait. Especially the way the pace I take, it's like you don't have to wait 10, 15 years for a new song. You know what I mean? So this way we can get them out every six months or so. Now that we got Golden Robots and stuff too we're together, it gives us more of a incentive to get stuff done. You know what I mean? Because it wasn't really so much a part of not doing stuff last, you know, before that. It was a matter of just we we constantly tour too. So we get back and then we'd forget where we left off. And then we'd get <laughs> sidetracked because we'd be like, we'd have this song then and we'd go... And then we'd start working on new stuff. We, I got this new idea. And then we pretty soon we'd have this just pile of songs that weren't done. So it's like, and that's what I've been doing lately besides Ghost. Like Nola, Nola, we put out last year and we're going to re release that through Golden Robot. Okay. Probably next before we, we have another new one, but we might put that new one out with Nola again. Just so. Just so it gets some push and people can hear it. But that was a song that was started 
when Hurricane Katrina happened in New Orleans. You know, it's that it was almost on Glory Hall. It just wasn't done yet. So we didn't have I didn't want to put it out undone. So I didn't want to rush it because I knew it was a cool song. But it was like going through a lot of these tracks that I we started a long a while ago, you know, a decade ago that are really cool songs. I just never finished them. So it's like now we're like going through them, having Sam Bam with me too, doing some of the shit. He's just an amazing kid. He's just, his guitar chops are killer. And he's just coming in. We've been redoing all the guitars that basically they were just my, my scratch tracks from writing it and stuff and just having him play on it. It's just amazing. So it's been pulling up these songs and getting some of those. And you know, Ghost, like a ghost was a new one, but we'll put some new stuff together too. But there's a lot in the can that we're working on now trying to get done that, that are almost done. It's just a matter of just tweaking and redoing some of the vocals, redoing some leads and, you know, just tweaking, just tweaking I, them out. I like the idea that kind of the method, especially as a, the main theme, as a Guns N' Roses fan where you're waiting sometimes 10, 15 years that you're a you're you're keeping us updated which i appreciate you know as much as you can but that it's uh you're you're not waiting for an entire album like if you have something like you know what this is pretty cool here and then you, it's you, a different it, time it's a yeah. different time now it's where it's like it's everything's fucking instant you know what i mean yeah. everything's instant you can just it's it's a different world than from when us and g and r started you know what i mean it's like just <laughs> You know, there wasn't an internet. Um, I mean, there was for the government, but not for us. You know what I mean? The cell, cell phone? Ugh. I remember getting like calling card numbers when we go on tour and going to pay phones and using calling card numbers to call back your friends and at home and stuff. And, you know, you know. It's, it's funny. I remember those days too. Uh, I do remember briefly like being in radio, not in the music side. It wasn't always automated. You know, you had to cut tape and everything. I, I do get that, but I'm I'm I am younger, so I miss the the cat house days. I miss those days. Uh, you, you mentioned flashbacks. So I want to sprinkle in fan questions. You know, and these are about you know past, present, current, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, people were excited to hear from you, Tammy. Uh, one, this is from David Holmes in uh, the UK. Saw you in '87 supporting GNR. Just as just a comment that they were a uh, mm -hmm. great underrated band. Uh, some I just want to get. They're not even questions. Some I'll, I'll mention. I'll get those out of the way yeah. first. Do you hear this uh, a lot? I'll give a shout out to the Tony Coleman. Did you get his number off the bathroom wall? Is that a? Is <laughs> it, is it, we or, get that a lot. I, I know, remember that. I, know, I remember I know. that tour a lot. I still have this. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. That. This is from the. Uh, Ooh. This is from the tour. From it's, it's keep it here on my desk. Hold my expo pins, but. Uh, I was just thinking about I was just thinking about that tour too because that whole anniversary of the Lockerbie thing and and that was in '88. That was just after we went there, and then we went over there on our own in '89, and we flew back on the same flight that flew there a year a year later on that day, Christmas Eve or whatever. The whole Lockerbie Scotland Pan Am flight. Mm -hmm. That went down. It's all, the, all over the news today. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not familiar with, uh, with that. I've been focusing on moving in, in this interview, I guess. But uh, I want to get into other... Uh, this is another comic. Just a minute. You mentioned Sam Bam before. Uh, mm -hmm. This is from Danny Laundry. He's an amazing guitarist. But, uh, yeah, I guess because I don't want to keep you here. I mean, we still have some more time, but I, I don't want to keep uh, fans waiting so long because I got a lot of uh, people asking you got, Brando, you got to sure. ask him ab about the '87 tour and opening up for for Guns N' Roses. And there's some sub questions there because that's a lifetime ago. Again, we're talking about this is different times now. How do you look back on those? Because I'm sure you've been asked about it many times throughout the years. How do you look back on 1987 with GNR in, in 2022? That that was so fun. I I still remember it. I still remember it like it was well. Not yesterday because it was a fucking long time ago, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. I just remember go. It was our first time in Europe, so well, in UK and then Germany, and going to there was a McDonald's across the street from the hotel. You know what I mean? That was the first place that we saw the McRib, and just 
walking around the arena in Newcastle going, you know, it was like the hi, 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 hi. They were doing knocking on heaven's day always for sound check. So we'd be in the back just yelling at it and stuff. And it was just, it was just so much fun. It was just like, everything was the first time being in London. You know, we sold out the Hammersmith Odeon. We got to be friends with the choir boys. I remember, I remember the choir boys taking us over to the Greyhound to see Dogs and More playing. There was like, 20 people there and it was it was kill, a killer just staying at the same hotel I can't remember the name of it but Mud Honey was there too and that was before any of the Seattle shit took off okay. they were just like friends they were like oh, I'm from, we're from Seattle and I think one of them knew Duff too and it was like Duff's from Seattle as well so it's like you know I just certain things like that from that tour I remember like being in Germany for the first time and Hamburg and going there. And it was just fun. I mean, I turned 20, 23 there. Okay. And, wow. And the label, the label all took, the all label took us out. We were all hanging out the Reaper bond and, and I got the, then I got the flu and I was like, kind of I was sick for two days and that sucked. But just stuff like that I remember you know I just remember bringing back a giant magnum of champagne from from Germany because I was too sick to drink it then so we saved I saved it we drank it on my 25th birthday a couple years later I'm glad to hear because I was interested based upon what we were talking about before about just sobriety and uh sometimes you, people don't like to look back so when you look at that that mug on your desk right now that the Guns N' Roses Faster Pussy Cat mug. Like, that's awesome. You still have it and there's highlighters and pens in it. Does it all flood the, the good feelings flood back? Or is it kind of like, whoa, I'm kind of glad I survived that? Or do you like how do you, you know, again, I, it's it's kind of the age old question too. And uh, do you prefer when people look at it, sleaze rock or hair metal? Like it's just uh I guess it's all the encompassing of like what memories flood back. Because even all for me, I, I look back good. and like, yeah. There's certain things like that is all good because it was just everything was new. We were kids. It was fun. G and Art Izzy Izzy was like one of my first friends in L.A. ever, and that's how I got to be friends with G and R from Izzy. And Izzy used to come up on stage with us and play it before we got our record deal and shit with Electra. So and then. When they were going over there, they took us with them, you know. So was, they brought us. It was their deal at GNR. So I was always grateful for that. And we always, you know, the cat house and everything it was kind of like a big family. It was fun, you know. It, was, it brings back really good memories. I actually could have worn my cat house sweatshirt that I bought off Ricky Rackman's website. Not as cool, <laughs> I guess, as as getting uh, it sent to you from Mark Alexander Ur Erber. I'll actually give that because I was going to ask you uh, via a listener, Erica, about what GNR member you were closest to. And it's cool that you said Izzy because he's a man of, of mystery that really hasn't been, you don't see much or, or hear of him now. I mean, I know. I don't even know where the fuck he is. Last I heard, he was had a studio and a place down and down by the beach, San Monica and stuff. And that was like, I miss him. He, I, he was always just a, such a great, great guy to me. And, and the band, you know. What do you, uh, I guess, think about, because, um, and not that I'm, again, see, I'm seeing a lot of good stuff about uh, the Faster Pussycat and the lineup and everything, but it's like with GNR, you have the hardcore fans, you know, like it's not, it hasn't been the same since Izzy left, it hasn't been the same since so-and-so left. How do you feel about, I guess, Guns N' Roses and uh, all the changes that they've been through? Do you speak to any of those guys? I know you said you were closest with Izzy, you don't talk to him now, but. I don't, nowadays? I don't, I don't, I see, I'll see Duff every once in a while. And of course, you know, me and Gilby are, you know, the bike buddies. Gilby's not, Gilby's not in GNR anymore, but we're both riding buddies and we fucking hang out all the time. And Duff, I mean, I got along with Duff, it's like all of them, really, but I just don't really, our worlds are all different places, you know, now. It's like, I'm glad they're back out doing their shit, but if hey, you got Axel and you got Slash and Duff, you got some rocking, you know what I mean? So whoever they add with them, whether it's Tommy or just whoever, it's you got the, that core, 
there's going to be some rock involved, and it's going to be it's going to be good. I'm, Guns N' Roses has always been one of my favorite bands ever. You know what I mean? Since since the day we became friends, you know. That's cool because I've had this was a while ago. I had uh, Penelope Spheris on, who did the uh, the director. I remember. Of, uh, of yeah, the, yeah, I you know, know you know. But if pe people listen, listening may not know. Yeah, because she's. I mean, they should know Wayne's World director, and of course, in our situation, uh, the decline of Western civilization part two. And it's just talking to her. It's interesting because he was so much focused on faster pussycat, and you guys are obviously other than the break, you've been touring, you've been you're successful, but G and R. She said like they were going to be in it, but like Alan Niven didn't want it because they were on this other stratosphere. Did you see yeah. that? Did we you see that going? New... When we, I saw a little bit of that. They were, they were, they were the shit. They got the big deal with Geffen and stuff. We were brand new. We were kids. We only been together ten months, and we got a record deal with Electra. That wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a huge record deal, but we didn't give a shit. We were like, we we got a record deal. We don't, we're going to go and do a record. And then we're going to go out and do some shows. So it's like, and then that happened like instantly, that whole decline. So, you know, that happened right, right be, that happened before, our, I think before our record even came out. So it all coincided pretty, pretty cool. Because we yeah. already had the cat house going and that was our shit. You know what right. I mean? That was my club. You know, I was the rock guy. Ricky was the club guy. Together we had a rock club, and it was like you know, that's how it happened. I again, I'm I'm I, I just missed the boat. I was I hate I'm sorry. I was born in '83. I was born <laughs> oh, in '83. I know '83. <laughs> you would have been like East someone's Coast. little baby being carried in there. I, I know, I know. But I, for some whatever reason, this is the era I gravitate towards. I mean, I guess my generation is more of the grunge, but I always loved and growing up. I guess uh, seeing the decline of Western civilization, I'm like, that's that's a cool. Those, that's like, I wish I was there. And it was the faster pussycats. It was obviously Guns N' Roses. So that's why I enjoy uh, kind of, I know it's old hat for you. And you have a very nice hat on, by the way. It's, oh, thank you. I like hearing it, you know, as as point of view. Uh, also, and, and apologies if you've gotten this question a lot, but I've gotten a few um, of these from listeners. So I'll give it to uh, Jason Alba. Was House of Pain. You know, that's a, uh, I don't know if, if you consider that your, your biggest hit or, or whatever, but House, oh, of, definitely. Uh, definitely. House of Pain, now, was it about someone you, uh, you knew? Like, what, yeah, was it? it's basically, basically my, about me. Yeah. It's about growing up with my old man. So, yeah. That's, that's what, what uh, that song's about. Yeah. Sure. And that goes, so goes out to, to Nick, ask the same thing. He's like, House of Pain will, will forever be in my top five, was in any way uh, self autobiographical. So, yeah. Uh, and I'll read some more nice stuff. Uh, Joe Shock, uh, well, he just posted a picture of him meeting you. Well, fans were excited. Oh, right on. Everyone says he's, like the, he's the nicest guy you get to meet. Very fan friendly. Uh, this is from Joe Finnamore. Dude is great. I ordered a hoodie from his website during COVID, and not only did he sign some shit, but the shit he signed, uh, sit, he, the shit he signed, he just sent. Um, it was a confusing sentence, and I think so. That's why I tripped over it. <laughs> Uh, but regardless, he's he's happy the, of of what you did for him, with signing a hoodie for him during COVID. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we used to try to sign a bunch of stuff, like especially if we're over over. We got the guys over track, and I'll have them sign some stuff. We got uh, we got a few some orders and sign some stuff. Give what him, about the stuff? Let's... What about touring? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, because I'm just again, I'm looking. Oh, it's all right. And I've had a few of uh, speaking of Wayne's World. Did you ever see the second one? Where it's the the radio DJ played by Harry Shear. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're promoting a Wayne stock, and he's not really paying attention. He's doing other things. I'm <laughs> paying I'm paying attention because sometimes I feel like I'm slow to answer. I'm reading their questions because I got a whole no, setup no. here. I need you're multitasking, sir. I need a producer. That's what I need. Uh, so that's that's fantastic. But I've had also a lot of requests as far as speaking of, I guess COVID. Um, any makeup tours. That you that were canceled like uh, do we know of of what we we were like cut off right at the right when it happened and but then we were the first one to go back out we went we were out in 2021 20, like right california still wasn't even open so we started in vegas and usually we start everything in california because that's where we live so so we don't have a bunch of deadheads paying you know <laughs> 
deadheads, not in terms of Grateful Dead, but in terms That's what of I thought you meant for take, half a second. <laughs> no, taking the bus somewhere, driving somewhere with no gig and just paying fuel and driver fee and bus cost of the bus. That's a deadhead. So got it. Besides the Jerry Garcia fanatic. <laughs> so. I gotcha. Oh, very cool. Um, let me see I'm, I, I, why I got you. I don't want to miss it. Again, a lot of uh, great questions, but I don't want to. Oh, this was, we did. Uh, we did get. We did get yoinked from the UK. That was right when it happened. Right that was the specific March. That was right when everything got shut down, and we were supposed to go to do UK to do a festival and uh, Hard Rock Hell and like five other shows. So that that hasn't been made up yet. We haven't been back over. So hopefully we're going to do some Europe. We're, you know, we've got other stuff coming. But. Oh, that, that was specifically UK. And that goes out to Ben Harper who, who yeah. asked, uh, and here's the question I was looking for. Uh, it's a stab in the dark. You never know. Uh, this is from Garrett Smith. My question would be if the intro to house of pain and patience had any influence on one another, both came out in 88. Not sure if this would be possible. What, what do you mean? What, what was that? Like the, the intro of House of Pain and the intro uh -huh. of, of Guns N' Roses song Patience. Was yeah, there yeah, any yeah. influence on each other, I guess, there? Is Not this, at all. I think we yeah. are both in our world, in our own little worlds right then. It's like House of Pain, We I had you know Jimmy Z blow, blowing the harp on that. And yeah, there wasn't, we're, like I said, we were fans of GNR, but we we're all both in our own, own little fucking world it's doing our own stuff it's funny how <laughs> fans are then because it's all like you know in our own world it's faster pussycat it's guns and roses but then you you have your own little worlds without our worlds it's just uh and there's a it's interesting. there's a lot of cross cross too because like you look at our video for bathroom ball then you look at sweet child of mine there's some of the same people that were working on both videos and you can see some of the songs different you know what i mean but the, you can mm -hmm. see like a lot of how it was shot and and stuff they're very similar similar time it was like that was a fun time <laughs> like i said before everything was new everything was a new adventure back then is there uh is there gonna be a faster pussy gap movie at some point kind of like the dirt do you think everything something like that could happen uh, i don't think there was quite enough crazy shit like botley had but yeah i never no, say I, never never say never because I feel like I have some crazy shit in terms <laughs> of just stuff with the club and just whatnot. But well, the, the Tame Me Down story you can do. We're gonna we might be stuff that's in the work for a book, so we'll see what happens. Have you Already, been, that is. Are you able to say that or no? Was that yeah? Well, yeah. It just it hasn't. Nothing's been finalized, but everything's going. We've got a book deal in the motion right now. So I do anyway. Oh, that's awesome. Not that's faster awesome. to me, but it's faster as me too. So I created the band. So Right. Yeah, no, I'm I'm excited. I'm glad you said that. That's kind of like why I ask you ask random questions. Yeah, you no, never no know what you can is, uncover. That's that's brand new. That's just as, as of a couple of days ago. So the, you get it first. That, I appreciate that. Was that yeah. something uh, I guess a, a follow up here able to answer? Is that something that came with sobriety or is that something that you were working on for a long time? It was like stuff that always people are always going, you should do a book. And I, then I'd go, then I'd get in the mood to work. Yeah, I should do a book. And then I'd get going. But then I was a little bit, you know, a little out of control and some of the stuff. And I'd be like, and I just forget about it. You know, I get all into it, then get sidetracked by something else. And then I'd, I'll get back to it one of these days. And then, but I don't know. I've always like, that'd ah, be weird you know and then just lately in the last couple of years i mean i guess i should probably do something before i forget everything <laughs> be, like, so. right on. and if you can uh one last one this is just for me as sure i as one of my two faster pussy cats well they're actually not fast one is slow one's fast just came here he's about to bark at me this one oh. barks this one barks he's like Meow. that's awesome yeah it's great um this is probably is. I'm sure you got in this question. I just had I didn't come across the answer. Uh, the name of the band did that come from the uh, the, the film, the exploitation film by uh, yeah. Russ Meyer? Okay, yeah, Fast yeah, it did. Okay. It came from that, and then uh, we actually got to have Russ Meyer did 
don't change that song video he did our first video okay so that was pre- that was pretty cool to have have that legend do a three three minute movie just for me or just for us you know that, that's bad that that's pretty, awesome that's that's pretty cool and this has been pretty cool to say the least amy i really appreciate your time and just sharing what you shared with us and uh, i really hope we get to do this again oh anytime brother my pleasure it was fun and uh, just once again, thank you to, uh, I was, he never popped in, Mark Alexander Erber. That's okay. Uh, what the fuck? I guess shaved my. He must have been head. like down there chasing kangaroos or something. He must Trying to catch sick. his boomerang. I know. Chaz was this. Sorry, I'm going to go off on a Simpsons Australian <laughs> tangent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So that does. Fun a web spoiler. <laughs> so that does it for this episode of Appetite for Distortion. When will you see the next one? In the words of Axel Rose concerning Chinese democracy, you'll see it, I don't know if soon is the word.